Today on Horsepower, we'll tear into these parts and finish a monumental muscle car motor. Now, it won't be your father's Oldsmobile. It'll be a 455 fit for big numbers on the dyno. A couple of weeks ago, we stripped down a well-worn Olds 455 we picked up at a boneyard. We took our block to Mandelo's Tech Center for a complete machining, where we also had the crank balanced. And the stock rods resized for use with new pistons. Then Dr. Olds himself stepped in for a basic cleanup porting of our new heads and to deburr the block for better oiling. After knocking in new cam bearings, they installed a new hydraulic roller cam. They installed oil restrictors in the main bearings to improve the 455's infamous oiling problems before dropping in our stock crankshaft. Mandelo tweaked the new piston rings with a touch of grinding and a little smoothing with a special stone. Then, after installing them on our new pistons and refurbished rods, he put them into our 455's block, followed by a cam degreeing at four cylinders. The last pieces to go on were our new oil pump and pickup. Our original goal was to salvage as many original parts as possible, including this front cover. Now, once we get this thing on, we can button up the bottom end. Before you install a new pan on your project motor, you want to make sure you have enough clearance between the pickup and the bottom of the pan. Here's a quick rundown of how to do it. Use a straight edge on the bottom of the pickup and measure from the bottom of the straight edge to the pan rail. Then measure the pan's depth using the straight edge as well. Add an eighth of an inch for the gasket and you should have between three eighths to a half an inch of clearance. Then after laying a bead of silicone down, we can put our front and rear seals in place. Next, we can lay our Mr. Gasket Ultra Seals in place and drop on the oil pan, which is a 7-quart pan made by Moroso for the 455. Before anything else, though, Mike's going to paint this motor's bottom and give it a touch of nostalgia. Classic Olds Gold, of course. We're using a cast iron mechanical water pump we got from O'Reilly Auto Parts store. Next, we'll install the balancer we got from Pioneer. If you saw our show a couple weeks ago, you caught a glimpse of these Edelbrock Performer RPM heads for the 455. They've got combustion chambers that spec out at 77 cc's, valves are 219, 188, and well, these things make really good power right out of the box. But as we saw at Mandelo's place, there's always room for improvement. These guys don't allow any heads to leave the building without a little tweaking, roughing out the combustion chamber valve pockets in our case and polishing them to a smooth finished surface. Again, these heads are ready to use right out of the box, but a three angle valve job is assurance the valves will seat well and flow freely on the flow bench, as well as when they're installed on the motor. So about the only thing we could do to these heads is port match the gaskets, but man, these things are dead on. So let's go ahead and install this thing. Gaskets on. And so is the head. Since these bolt holes are blind, we just need a little bit of ARP assembly lube on the threads of these bolts. We're torquing these heads in three sequences, 30, 50, and 75 foot-pounds center out. If you use 30 weight motor oil on the threads though, the final torque setting is 85. Here's an important little piece you don't want to leave out on these Oldsmobiles. It's a splash guard that goes down in the lifter valley. Now what it does is it keeps any oil from splashing off of the camshaft onto the bottom of the intake manifold. Because what that does is it heats up the intake and the fuel and air coming in and robs horsepower. We've been soaking our comp hydraulic lifters about eight or nine hours now and I'd say they're ready to go in. You know, it's a funny thing, but on the website forums, about half the guys insist on pre-pumping the lifters before installation. And well, if you've never done this, you take a push rod, then you just push down on the plunger until all the air bubbles are gone. That means the lifter's full of oil. Well, most manufacturers like Comp discourage pre-pumping, saying that the lifter full of oil will cause the valve to open during lashing. Well, I don't want any hate mail, so I'm not telling you what we do. Next, we can drop in our push rods and remember to clean them up before you do this. For rockers, we're using Comp's Aluminum Ultra Golds. Now, we got ours with a 1.6 ratio. To adjust them, work one cylinder at a time with each lifter on the base circle of the cam. Tighten the poly lock until you get all the slack out with a little bit of resistance. Now you're at zero lash. Next, turn the poly lock just under a half turn. 
Now tighten the set screw and use the T-handle to lock them down into place. This will give you the ideal preload of the rocker arm, push rod, and lifter. Even though it's nice, you don't need a special tool like this to get this job done. All you need is a wrench and an Allen, or a bob if you've got one laying around. Hey, we'll see you in a minute. We gotta take a break. We're back with our O's build and now with this aluminum intake. I remember a time back in the 70s when the 455 was in its heyday that about the only thing I had aluminum was the foil on my TV rabbit ears. Anyway, this Edelbrock Performer is a vast improvement over the cast iron original. It's a dual plane, low rise design. It made to give you plenty of torque over a broad power range and plenty of throttle response from off idle to 5,500 RPM. They recommend a quarter inch bead of silicone to make the seal. And that's because the rubber and cork gaskets, well, they can get oil soaked. And what happens is the crankcase pressure from the engine will push the seals out from under the intake manifold. And that's where you get into end seal slippage. Take your time with it. You don't want to have to do it twice. Now, we're not going to torque it down now, and here's why. We get email questions from time to time about torque specs and sequences and well, each situation is different depending on whether you're dealing with cast iron or aluminum or whether you're putting motor oil on the threads or assembly lube or nothing at all. And well, it's no big secret. You just go to the manufacturer's website. In our case, Edelbrock has this diagram of the 455 and it shows torquing from the outside in that moves the gasket inward a little bit, helps prevent water jacket leaks, which occur on the outside. Well, these pretty rocker arms match our block so much, I almost hate to cover them up. Catch. There's been another cover up here. No one told us Chris from Extreme knows his way around engines. We're gonna try him out and see exactly what he can do. Is this the right motor plate? Let's make him feel extremely at home. You ever drive anything before? Uh, forget the jams, but let's keep Chris. Push. We're bolting up a set of Headman long tubes with inch and three quarter primaries that dump into a three inch collector. Now they fit the olds 400, 425, and our 455. You probably notice these fasteners look a little different than normal, and that's because they are. Check this out. They're friction lock fasteners from Percy's, and what they do is cut two grooves in the end of the threaded portion of the bolt. And what that does is allows this Allen set screw with the lag to expand the end of the bolt once it's tight. And that way, you won't have a leaky header. Since it's a 3 8 bolt, torque it to 28 foot-pounds. Then using an eighth inch Allen, tighten the set screw. To feed our olds, we're using this Summit 750 CFM square bore four barrel. Now this thing has mechanical secondaries and a manual choke. Now this is the same carb we used on our 464 a while back and it worked really good. So now we're going to see how it does on a more performance based platform. Over the past couple of years, a lot of questions and concerns have popped up about wear protection in engines, especially during flat tap at cam break-in. Now, the EPA has figured out that ZDDP and phosphorus in motor oils can destroy catalytic converters and emission systems, hence more pollution. Now, the downfall to all this is phosphorus and zinc are the two main active ingredients in oil that fight wear protection, and without it, it's extremely fatal with flat tap at cams and lifters. Now, since we're working on an Oldsmobile, Joe Mondello wants us to run this. It's his special formula that's added to motor oil, so we know we're going to have a safe break-in. Now, all of these products still contain zinc and phosphorus, and I think the scientists will have a hard time finding anything better. Did we put fuel in the tank? No, the gas cans are sitting out there. All right, here we go. All right. No. All right, that's why retarded. Plugs aren't that wet either. That's why. Pump didn't turn on. Fuel will help. Dee -dee -dee. I know. <laughs> that's what I get for laughing at Chris. But then again, Chris. I didn't do it. It's just, oh, I did do it. <laughs> when we finally did get our heads out to where the sun does shine, we were able to start it up, get the timing in the ballpark. Too much, back off. Right there, right there. And then kill a few mosquitoes. Yeah, it sounds like it's choking out when it goes back to idle. 
Yeah. <laughs> Before we go any further though, I want to make sure the top end is getting oil. That's yeah, getting oil. Sweet. All right, we're gonna fire it back up and let it run. Breaking in a flat tappet cam is like heart surgery. Do it right the first time and you'll avoid a lot of problems. Now we're running the Olds at 2,000 RPM. How long does that take? Plenty. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. minutes. And yeah. then stepping up to 2,500 for 10 minutes. Hallelujah, finally. Good job, guys. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, man, I'm really, really impressed at the throttle response yeah. of it. It, sound, it does sound really mean at idle. I love it. Just mm -hmm. It dances quite a bit, but... See, we practice what we preach. Right now we're draining the braking oil, then we'll fill it up with some new. And then we'll be able to see how much power our 455 spins out on the dyno. But first, you guessed it, another brake. We dreamed it, Joe Mandela machined it, and we just finished it. All right, she's oiled up, warmed up, and hey, we even shined it up a little bit so we know it's ready to go. Now for the first pull, we're gonna take it from 25 to 4,500 just to make sure everything's all right. By the end of this dyno session, we plan on making one horsepower per cubic inch. If you remember right, that's 455. So it looks like we're ready to go. You ready, Whisker Biscuit? <laughs> yeah, let's see what it'll do. All right. The first run was awesome without the off. The horsepower is just not there. 335. Yeah. To set the initial timing, you need to remove the vacuum line and plug the port on the car. That's good. Something ain't right. Ah, here it is, the culprit. We got a vacuum line with a small hole in it and it's right at the opening of the canister, so it's not pulling full vacuum on the distributor for the advance. So we'll cut this thing shorter, fix it, and hopefully make more power. So much for hope. Let's try to advance the timing a bit. Right there. About the same. It's making 500 foot-pounds of torque, but the power's not there, about 330. Hey, when you're sick, you call the doc. And All here's right. Mondello's diagnosis. I will swap it out. <laughs> While the Summit 750 is good, it's just not big enough for this motor. So on went a Holly 870 Street Avenger, and we were ready for another pull. 376, torque came down. Brought 463. The horse power up, though. Yeah. We're running lean, so time for bigger jets. That was already an improvement. Let's look at the graph. Kind of yeah, man, that's wild. Chaos like this points to the distributor. They use a bushing, and they were just so tight against the actual weight that it was sticking shut. And as it went up through the RPM range, it wasn't advancing properly. Yeah, 525. 525 foot-pounds, 437 horsepower. This thing's making some big torque numbers. That'll work. It's an Oldsmobile, though. Don't let the smile fool you. Mike won't be happy till he hits that magic 455 horsepower number. Yeah. We're so close. Real slow. Hey, all right. Perfect. But after countless runs, time had run out. It's frustrating when we get so close. Since I couldn't sleep, I bribed one of the camera guys to meet me for one last run. Yes, 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 456 horsepower. That's that one horsepower per cubic inch. We even got 537 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I think the reason this is all happening is because of the dry, cool air. Man, this is cool. Now I'm happy. Build on a budget. Horsepower projects that save you time and money. Most of our budget tips deal with saving time and money while you're trying to make your motor run better. Well, this time it's all about making your car look better. If this thing works, we're gonna call it the colorful cure for the inferior interior. All you'll need is about 20 bucks worth of materials, including Dupacolor vinyl and fabric paint, some of their prep wipes, and of course, some masking tape. Of course, anytime you paint, you do it in a well-ventilated area. Now, the tuner guys on tight budgets have been doing this for a long time. 
decorating everything from the dash to the door panels for a newer, more lively look. Now, I gotta admit, we're learning together on this one, but it can't be too difficult as long as we follow some basic steps. We're like cleaning first, which we've done in the case of this fabric here, and paint with patience. Here we go. You wanna lay it down with nice, even thin coats, side to side and beyond the edges. We'll probably lay down about three. Now, it's not gonna change the color much, but it will make that unevenly faded fabric look younger than its years. Well, not bad for a rookie. This stuff dries amazingly quickly. In fact, I think it's ready for some masking tape and some real color here on the vinyl parts. Well, now that we got it masked off, we can clean it thoroughly with one of these prep wipes and dry it with a lint-free cloth. Same drill with the vinyl paint, three thin coats, and don't forget to shake the can to keep the paint even. Okay, here we go, drum roll please. Hey, I gotta admit, that looks pretty good. And of course, we could go on with the door panels, headliner console, the whole interior. And it's not a professional job, but hey, 20 bucks for two seats? That ain't too bad. Oh, one more thing. There's nothing like a set of unrestricted bufflers when you go to a car show or the local cruise night. But you know, sometimes you don't want that annoying drone when you're just driving down the highway. Well, now you can have it both ways with Patriot's VeriFlow tunable muffler. Using sound flow inversion technology, you get this patented motor and valve design that lets you drive along and redirect the exhaust, thereby changing the sound. Now, they come with two and a half inch inlets and outlets, a very slim four inch body, and a simple two wire hookup for easy installation. It's ideal for street riders for the price of about 360. Well, time for us to pipe down, pack it up, and get out of here and get ready for next week's horsepower. We'll see you then.